My previous bed had one glaring downfall. The lowest setting was too high and required a ladder to get onto the bed. It also was a safety issue because one could roll off the bed and onto the floor. My young grandson did just that. I decided to adopt the design of another builder I saw on Facebook and incorporate his ideas into my design. Okay, as far as sleeping accommodations, I have a queen size bed here. It's a full queen size width, uh, but it's called what's called an RV uh, short uh, in the lengthwise. Um, the linear actuators down below are rated at 200 pound capacity each, and I've got three of them. Uh, the tracks are rubber made shelving track, and the, uh, the wheels there are three inch heavy duty uh, garage door uh, rollers. Uh, one of my uh, previous videos said uh, trailer finished. Well, that's not necessarily the case. I did have a question mark there, so you know I'm always making improvements and changing things. And uh, I decided to change my elevator bed uh, situation. Uh, it was very limited as to the travel. This is as low as I could get the bed was right here. Uh, so that would mean that you would have to use a ladder or step a ladder to uh, climb in the bed. And then uh, you could have a possibility of somebody rolling off the bed like my grandson did uh, on a camping trip. And so I decided that uh, there needed to be a better way. And fortunately, there was a gentleman on YouTube that uh, already came up with a solution, and I'm just copying him. But uh, since I had to uh, adapt uh, the bed that, the system that I have, and I've already uh, did the walls, I had to do some uh, uh, deconstruction, uh, as you would say. So what I had to do was I had to cut into the wall and uh, get down to the frame, and I welded up uh, some tabs with uh, some 5 16 rods on it that I've threaded, uh, made into a bolt. And I went ahead and welded that to the frame, and because uh, this is the mount, uh, the bed will mount from these areas. There'll be four of them, two on each side, and uh, the bed will be suspended by suspended by these straps right here. And I needed uh, to make sure that I had a very strong uh, place to anchor the bed at. I didn't want to just put it in the wood because this is a more of a oh, it's not a real real good plywood, it's a more particle board type of wood, and it just wouldn't hold any anchors properly. So so what I did was, I had to take a saw and I had to cut into the wood, and then I had to, there was a, uh, a furring strip back here, and I had to uh, cut that furring strip out and get all the way down to the frame. As you can see the frame right there, and then I had to weld these tabs in place. And as you can see, it's a, it's a pretty sloppy job, but I, I, didn't, I didn't have enough room in there to really work. So I was kind of limited on uh, using the, uh, the wand there on the welder. So, but they are in there secure. They're not going anywhere, and I'll be able to uh, suspend the weight of the, the bed. Now, what I will do is I'll get some of the spray foam and uh, great stuff spray foam, and I will fill this hole in with foam, and then I'll uh, use a, uh, a file to file it smooth. Then I went to Walmart and I bought um, some cutting board and uh, it was like seven bucks for a big sheet of cutting board. And I cut out some squares and as you can see, once I have the foam in there, these will go up like this and then the strap, there's a hole back there I had to enlarge, the strap will go there with a bolt holding it on, and that's what the bed will, will be suspended from this, and you have some adjustment. But we'll see how we'll talk about that later. All right, uh, looks like we're making a little bit of progress here. Uh, I've got my, my welding done, I've got my loops installed, uh, guide, guides for the straps. I got uh, a smooth surface for the strap to go over. PVC pipe with some beeswax. Now, the next step is I, have to, I had to make a mounting bracket uh, for the motor. So let's go over and see what I got done so far. Making uh, some progress here. I made uh, the mounting plate uh, for the motor. You can see it right here. Uh, steel plate there. Uh, 
one eighth inch thick uh, steel plate. It was exactly pretty much the right size. It was four inches wide, about eight inches long. I'll probably end up trimming that down. So I had to uh, cut the holes so it would mount to the gearbox there. That wasn't too much of a problem. And now I'm going to go over and fit it uh, to my frame and figure out where I need to cut this and shape it and put some uh, mounting holes to mount it to the frame. Uh, let's go over there and do that. The shaft there on that engine is 10 millimeters and this 5 8 uh, outside diameter uh, steel here, uh, the inside is about 11 diameter, so it, it's a real snug, it does fit real nice. Let's go ahead and get it in there. So it looks to me I'm going to have to cut a relief in the frame down there for that one bolt to fit in. And then uh, we'll do that first. So it'll be installed about like this. And uh, I'll trim the bottom of that, that mounting plate off and it'll mount up real nice. Be completely out of the way. It, uh, nobody will bop their head on it, so let's get going on this. Well, I'm uh, at the point right now where I'm attaching the straps to the drive bar, drive tube. I don't know what you, I don't know what, exactly what you call it, but anyway, uh, the chrome molly uh, steel that turns and wraps the straps up and down. I have to have a way to attach the strap to the chrome molly. Now the gentleman that I uh, got my inspiration from, he um, drilled a slot and put the strap in and epoxied it in place. I went ahead and tried a different method. What I've done is I um, took the strap and my wife uh, doubled them over and sewed them. And then I've made some, uh, well, let me just show you. So as you can see, I've taken a little piece of um, aluminum uh, that was actually cut out from the trailer window where I put the windows in. I've made a little uh, device here, drilled three holes. I've got the doubled up strap there, drilled three holes, and I'll go ahead and uh, rivet those in place. And then when the strap wraps around it, uh, the actual friction of the strap being wrapped around itself will where it will get its actual strength from. So I, I don't. I think this is going to be more than adequate. Well, remember I said I was going to fill those cavities with some foam? Well, I did, and uh, I got a little carried away. Let me give you a close-up. As you can see, that foam really expands. You know, a lot of times people will say, hey, can I just drill a hole in the side of my uh, trailer and spray some foam in there? Well, no, you can't do that with this type of foam. Because then you can see how much it expands, and it would literally push the outside of your uh, your trailer, the skin of your trailer, it would push it out and make a bubble. So uh, you have to be real careful when you're doing this. Matter of fact, let's go look outside and see if I got any bubbles. Well, as you can see, there's no bubbles there. So <laughs> I guess we're safe. Now this one, really out there. So what I'm going to do to... Uh, trim these down and just get a hacksaw blade and just right along the side of the wall and I'll just saw right through it and it'll be able to get right through that. Well, look at there. I get the foam off the uh, the, the bolt there, and uh, and then as I showed before, uh, I made these covers out of uh, cutting board. They'll fit right over there, and uh, kind of clean it up a little bit, make it look good. I've been uh, working on my uh, my motorized bed. I've got the, the redesign already done. Uh, thank you to uh, a fella on uh, Facebook um, called Brennan who gave me all the uh, ideas for this, so it's not my original design. Uh, there's some other bright fellow that uh, figured it all out, but I just implemented his uh, ideas. And so this is my version of the bed. So first thing uh, we're going to do is go look at the tarp motor. So here's the, uh, they call it a tarp motor on eBay. It was only like $60. 
It says it's 100 watt at 12 volts, but actually this thing pulls 20 amps. So 20 uh, times 12 is uh, a little bit more than 100 watts. So uh, just be prepared for that. Um, I've got it hooked up uh, to my wiring system that I had before. The frame is my original frame, which is a wood outer frame, and then one half inch uh, tubular steel that I have for supports there. Okay, so this gearbox comes with a motor, and then this is a five eighths inch outside diameter chrome moly steel. It's a very thick uh, chrome moly. It's it's point one two zero uh, thickness wall thickness, so it's a really strong tube. And uh, got these pillow blocks right here, so you can see how I've got that set up. And uh, so what I did was, uh, instead of cutting slots in the metal, what I did was I just drilled uh, some holes and I made some small aluminum uh, plates that go over the top of the strap and are riveted to the metal. I think I have some pictures of that. Over here, what I have is some half inch PVC pipe and I cut it in half and then I just screwed it to the edge here. It's real slick and then the strap just goes right over that. You can see uh, how it winds up. I don't, I didn't put any guides. Uh, the Brennan uh, fella had guides on his but I didn't see any need for it. The straps wind up just fine. Uh, there's no guides at all. The tracks here are just Rubbermaid shelving track that I bought. And these are 3-inch uh, garage door wheels. You have to, in my design, you have to use the 3-inch. You can't get by with the cheaper 2-inch. Of course, I made these custom brackets here. My switch right here on the wall is just a, uh, a pivoting switch that changes the uh, the circuit so up and down. It's a momentary switch. The uh, the speed going down is pretty good. The speed going up is not as great. Let's go ahead and do the up speed. And uh, I've checked this with a clamp meter. All right, out. And uh, this thing pulls 20 watts. Uh, the motor pulls 20 watts when it's going up. This is uh, about three times faster than uh, my previous uh, linear actuator bed that I had. So it's not blazing fast going up, but it's fast enough. What I'm going to do for uh, keeping the bed in place, uh, I've bought vertical E-Track from Good Old Harbor Freight, uh, which is the cheapest place to get it, and it's quality stuff. But anyway, so the E-Track will be mounted to the wall, and then they have some special adapters that go in there that hold a 2x4, and I'll just put it in a short piece of wood, and uh, I'll be able to... Uh, lift this up a little bit and pop in the, the support and I'll have four supports on each side. There'll be four of those. So I'll be able to adjust the bed anywhere I want, uh, maximum height and then all the way down to 20 inches. I've got some temporary uh, wooden uh, supports there right now, but that's the plan. had the linear actuators before I had this design and the lowest I could put the bed it was about oh three and a half four feet high and it took a ladder to get in and it was just a pain uh, my wife really couldn't use it so this this sits at the uh, I have 20 inches of storage underneath so this sits at about uh, 30 inches high so it's really easy to you know climb onto and uh, but I think I'll be ha a lot happier uh, with the model this with this setup I got here so how much did this cost 
Well, it's uh, pretty reasonable to tell you the truth. A lot cheaper than going with the linear actuators. The, uh, the tarp motor was about $60 on eBay. Um, the shelving track is kind of expensive. Um, that's uh, about 10 bucks a piece. I needed uh, one, two, I needed eight pieces of that. So eight. So that, that was about 60 to 80 dollars for those pieces there. Uh, the strap set was, uh, I got that uh, Orino strap set, and that was like $35 for the strap. PVC pipe is nothing, some screws and bolts. Um, now the bed, I made that out of a uh, 2x3. The outer frame is made, by, is made out of 2x3, and then the, the metal uh, parts of it is 1x1 one one tubing. And I tell you the truth, I can't remember how much I paid for that. But the actual mechanical part to make it go up and down is pretty really reasonable. Um, oh, the garage door wheels, though, are, those are expensive. I bought those on Amazon. Uh, those are going to cost you, you know, $30, $40 for those things at least. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's pretty reasonable compared to the other options out there. A Happy Jack is like, what, $2,000? It's crazy money. But anyway, this, this, this is going to work just fine. All right. Um, let's see. What else is next for my trailer? Well, I'll think of something. <laughs> All right. Over and out.